Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you one of my new favorite search tools for WordPress and Elementor. The plugin is called Jet Search from the team at Crockleblock. The reason why we love this plugin is because it gives you, uh, you can see right here, it's all done through Ajax. So that means that the results come back instantly. So the user is not going to have to search and then click a button and go to a search page or anything like that. So let me show you an example of where we use this on a recent client website. So the client wanted the ability to have this search functionality right here and pull up a list without having to go to another page. So let me type in uh, a speaker by the name of John because I know there's a few of them on here. So if I type in John, you can see right here that it instantly is pulling up um, all the different posts or in this case, these are custom post types. Uh, for the speakers. So if I click on one of these, it goes straight into that speaker's page. So now I'm going to show you how you can use this plugin to have that sort of functionality on your website. So let's just go right into it. So let me show you the example that we're going to be working with so you can get an idea. So on this website, it's our test website where we have a bunch of blog posts. So I have it where you just type in something like Elementor. I just typed in the first three characters and you can see it's pulling in all of our posts that are related to Elementor. And as you can see, we have tons of them. So we have over 25. And so the good thing about this plugin is you can limit how many you want to show. Down here, you can go to the search page if you want. There's multiple ways to navigate. So that's what's cool about this plugin is they give you a lot of flexibility on how to display this uh, results area. So once you have purchased and installed and activated the plugin, now I'm going to show you exactly how you can create this in Elementor. Here we are on the back end of the website and I already have this installed, but all you have to do to find that widget is type in Ajax and search. Just bring that in and this is the new Jet Search uh, widget that is added when you install the plugin. So I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna show you how I set that example up and kind of go through step by step on how I set this up. So as you can see, there's a lot of flexibility with this plugin. Uh, you can see under style, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can style it and the content, uh, there's a lot of functionality in here. So I'm gonna go through um, each section and kind of give you an idea of what you can and can't do with this plugin. So the first section is the search form. So this is where you can change things like your placeholder, if you wanna have a submit button. So as you can see right here, that button went away. Um, one cool thing I like about this plugin is they, sh they have the ability to show uh, your categories list. So if you only want the users to be able to search within a certain category, you can add that sort of functionality right here. So for this use case, um, I just turn that off. And up here, you can change um, your icon here, you know, the standard type of things you're uh, expected to see in a plugin like this. So now we're going down to the search query. This is where a lot of the magic happens with what is it that the user is going to actually receive back. Um, so in this case, I only want the ability for the users to search um, all of our blog posts. So you can see right here, if you click by default, there's just post pages. And then this one I have is called speakers. So this is similar to the website right here. I created uh, a custom post type. And so that gave me the ability to search by the speakers. So depending on your use case, this will pull in post pages and any custom post types you have. And they have some really good functionality in here where you can actually include and exclude different terms. So if you want to make sure that you're always including certain terms or excluding, you could do all that right here. So it's nice. They give you a lot of flexibility on how the um, results will come back. So by relevance, ID, title, date, they give you a lot of good flexibility here. You can, uh, of course, ascend, descend right here. And this section right here. So what I like about this plugin also is when you need to test something, you can actually just do it right inside of Elementor. So you don't have to like hit update, go to the, the preview page, preview it. You can do most of that right within the browser. So this right here where it says post per page, this is right here, one, two, three, four, five. So if I change that to just two, it's only gonna show two results now. So, um, it, you know, this would vary depending on your website, but I think five is a pretty good number. And what's nice is you can also change the height of this and all of this uh, stuff. So this right here is how many you want the whole search query to limit. And so in this example, we have a lot of blog posts called Elementor. And so it's only going to show the first 25 results. So you can change this to, you know, if you have a lot, you can go ahead and just change that to like 100. So now you're going to see we have 88 of them. 
and you can see right here the pagination goes all the way to like page 18. So you're going to have to play around and figure out, you know, how many results you actually want to show. I recommend kind of cutting it off at some sort of limit um, because you can actually add the functionality down here where it says see all results. So it gives the user the ability to actually go to your uh, generic search page. And from there, they can go ahead and see all of the results if they wanted. So it's kind of nice to not, you know, have pagination pages go all the way like 20 or anything like that. So kind of keep it clean. That's what I recommend. Now, the next area is the results area. This is where you're going to make most of the modifications to this plugin. And the results area is this uh, area right here. So when the user types in something, this is called the results area. And from here, they give you a lot of flexibility. Um, so if you go right here, you can, the very first thing you need to make sure is how wide do you want it? So the way it works with this plugin is when you drop in this widget, it's going to take over the width of whatever container you're in. So if you have this split down the middle, the width of the search is only going to be that container. So let me show you an example. If I just go here and add another column here. So as you can see, the width of the search is now half. So if I added another one, it would be even skinnier. So you got to figure out where you're going to put the search and how wide you want it. So let me go ahead and delete these because I kind of like using a full width if I can. So let's go back into the results area, click on the widget, and you can pull up the results. So you could actually change how wide you want the results area. So you can have it where the search bar is full width and then this area could be more narrow. So you can do that under custom and then you can kind of let me pull this up here. So you're going to have to kind of go back and forth with typing in a result. So if you go right here, you can see you can make it wider if you wanted. You can go by certain uh, percentage, pixels, view width. What I recommend if you do need to do some sort of custom thing, uh, try not to use pixels. Use uh, the percentage or the VW, which is the view width. And you can also, of course, change the position, right, left, center. So let me go ahead and change that. So you can see if you go and do a percentage, make it only 20% on the right, it's going to only align 20% on the right. So if I go here, you can see. I really like this type of functionality uh, in, a, you know, in a plugin like this because you're, you're going to have to figure out for each website how it should look. So let's just go into um, this right here. This is just the width of the whole uh, search bar right here. And the next section is, do you want to show your thumbnail? So these thumbnails are your featured image. So if you do not have a featured image, uh, you can actually revert back to just a placeholder. So if for some reason you don't have a featured image, it can just show whatever image you want here. So one thing I did notice about this plugin is by default, the thumbnail size is that thumbnail. So let me show you what happens when you activate thumbnail. You can see right here, it's cropping it to, um, I believe it's 150 pixels by 150. So this is like a WordPress um, sort of default. So you can see that it's just, it's not, it's cutting off all of our images. It doesn't look very good. So I figured out if you just click on medium, it's going to pull in your featured image at the right aspect ratio and display it correctly. You can also change it to medium, large, but I think in most cases, the medium will be fine. You don't want to serve up um, a really large featured image here because that's going to slow down the performance of the website. So the next section is what do you want to show next to the thumbnail? You can do the post content, excerpt or if you have a custom field you can put that in here and that will show so that's really nice that they give you that ability so you can see right here if you go back in this is just pulling in the post content the first 20 characters so if you have really long content um, you may want to shorten that up maybe even five characters let's see how that looks so you can see right here it, it it's really cut off. So I think 20 is good. So one limitation I did notice about this plugin is it doesn't give you the mobile uh, variables for everything throughout this plugin. So it would be nice to have it where, let's say on desktop, I want to show 20, but on mobile, only five. So if you don't see the little mobile icon next to it, that means these variables can't be changed uh, on a per device. And then there's some other features in here too. If you're running e-commerce, you can actually turn the price on and off, ratings. And so now this section right here is these little things right up here, all the different ways that the user can navigate around to get the more results. So this first one is your results. You can see right here, I have it on. 
and it's just called results. So you can change it to something else here. And this button right here will activate this right here. So like I said earlier, when the user clicks on this button right here, it's gonna go into your search archive page. So if you don't have that styled up or anything like that, I recommend you go ahead and style up a nice search result page. So let me show you how it's gonna look if you did that already. So if you click right here, see all results, you can see right up here in the string, it's just pulling in all of the uh, different variables and showing it on the search results archive page. So I just had a really simple archive page called search results and just pulled in a grid right here. Nothing crazy, just kept it really simple for this uh, tutorial. So now I'm gonna show you the different settings with the navigation. So here we go with the bullet pagination. And you can see right here, this is called the bullet pagination down here the number paginations up here, and the navigation arrows is right here. Now, I just have all of these activated so I can show you, but I do recommend maybe just having one, maybe two. I wouldn't go ahead and add all three of them. That's kind of like too many different uh, ways that the user can navigate. It might be a little confusing. So let me see, in this example, I would like the arrows at the top and maybe the regular pagination on the bottom. So let's go ahead and the bullet navigation, we hide. The number navigation, let's put that in footer. And the navigation arrows, let's show that in the header. So now everything should be kind of swapped around. So now we have it up here, so the user can go right, left. And if you want the user to click on the page, you can do that right here. And if you need to change the way these arrows look right here, this is the navigation arrow type, you can go ahead and select one of these. So another thing I did find out with this plugin is this is using Font Awesome. So if for some reason you have a theme that is deactivating or turning off uh, Font Awesome, you might run into issues with your icons not showing up correctly. So in this website example, I have the generic Hello Elementor theme installed, and so I didn't run into any issues like that. But I did activate this website on Generate Press, uh, and I did start running into some issues with the icons showing up here correctly. And the next area is if you have a lot of different custom fields, you can show um, different things before and after the title or after the content. So if you have special uh, meta descriptions or anything like that, you could put it uh, in front or behind here. So that gives you a lot of uh, flexibility as well. And here we go with the notifications. So if there's no results, this is what text will show. If there's a technical error, this is what would happen. So if you just go ahead and just start typing in some gibberish, you can see right here that text that shows up, you can just change that right here. So they make it really easy to go ahead and you know change this stuff without custom coding or anything like that. So now I'm gonna just quickly go through all the different styling options that you can do to the results area, the search bar up here. Um, and as you can see, there's tons of different uh, customizations in this plugin. So there's a lot to cover in here. So I'm gonna kind of quickly go through this. So the search form is this area right up here. How do you want it to display? So you can you know, change the background color and that will be right here. This is the search area. This is the input. So if you don't know what something is, that's kind of just what I do. I just go in and change the background color to see what section it is. So you can see right here, they have normal, focus, box shadows, padding, you know, the standard type of stuff. Um, so this one, I do recommend spending a little bit of time in here, making sure that you know, your typography is right, the colors are correct. Um, to match the rest of your website. The submit button is this button right here, of course, so you can go ahead and change the size of the icon if you wanted, really large, but don't recommend that. Change the background color, you can change how it's gonna be vertically aligned to the input form. There's a lot of different stuff in here. So this one right here, again, this is the results area. This is where you're gonna make most of your edits. So if I just start changing stuff around here, you can see that this is the gap in between the top of the results area and the input. So I do recommend you know having a little bit of a gap. You don't want it to have like a zero gap because the shadow might go over. So maybe like a little bit of a gap like that looks good. You can change the background color. And this function might be useful if you need to display it a certain height. So if you could see right here, it adds a scroll bar in here. So if your website design kind of calls for you know stuff that's not so high, you can change that right here and you could change that to something like really short, like a 200. And you can see there's gonna be a lot of scrolling. So if your website is you know very mobile friendly, maybe this would be a good idea to enable scrolling. 
because on mobile it might give a better user experience. And down here is the results items. So that is, let me pull this back up. Results items are actually each one of these is considered a results item. So this is where you can go ahead and let's say you want to have a red background, you can change that here. And then on hover, you can have it where it's a different color background on hover. It's kind of like a light gray I have on this example. And so this is where you can go ahead and start changing, you know, how wide you want your thumbnails to be. And, you know, you can kind of go crazy with it. And so that's what's nice about uh, some of these options in the styling. You can see when you click on mobile, you can change the width of your icons or your thumbnails right here. And, you know, when you're on mobile, you want to make sure that the user isn't scrolling too much. So maybe you have it a little bit smaller here. I don't believe there's a way that you can actually just turn off the um, icons on mobile. I wish they had that functionality, but I don't see that in here. And of course you can change how your title is going to look, how the content is going to look, the different results, you know, kind of like the standard Elementor stuff. If you've been working with Elementor long enough, you know this is kind of just like the standard styling. And everything else is pretty good in here. You can change the color of the spinner. So the spinner is that little animation that plays before. Uh, so if I go ahead and delete this, that little thing right here, that's red now. You can see that that was uh, the default color, I believe, is a blue. So let me deactivate that and see. Um, yeah, by default, it's kind of like a purplish blue. But So I just recommend using whatever color is going to match your website and your branding. And that's pretty much it for all the different styling. Uh, everything else under advanced is just the generic uh, Elementor settings, so nothing to change here. Um, like I said, you're going to spend most of your time just changing the results area, styling the results um, area and the items, and then everything else is pretty much standard. It's nothing crazy. But I do recommend going into mobile, tablet, you know, playing around with how wide these things are because you want to make sure that the user has a good experience on every device. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope this gives you a better overview on how powerful this uh, plugin called Jet Search is for your WordPress and Elementor websites. If you'd like to support the channel, we do have an affiliate link in the description below. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release more Elementor tips like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.